no sudden burst of wisdom from Hugo Chavez. He still hates us. The Federal Reserve still worried about us. And plus signs, but no stock record signs all around us. The Dow Jones Industrial is up about 73 points, still about 109 points from record territory. But first, to the story that eclipsed really all the number talk today, talk of hate attacking America in America with a sign of the cross. Hugo Chavez getting very cross with the man who spoke at the very same podium less than 24 hours earlier. Right here. It's not that we are extremists. It's that the, work is, the world is waking up. It's waking up all over, and people are standing up. I have the feeling, dear world dictator, that you are going to live the rest of your days as a nightmare. So many juicy sound bites, so little time. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto, and this is your world. Well, before you write off this guy as a kook, remember this. He is a kook with money, a lot of money. And for historian Christopher Hitchens, that makes him a kook with power. Christopher, what do you think of how he used that power today? Well, of course, it's partly to laugh about as well as to cry about. But, uh, I mean, I love in the week that the Pope messes up relations with Islam that he opens with a religious gesture of his very own. It proves that those of us who favor secular society over religious cults uh, are onto something. But he would be a tin pot, crackpot guy just to you know, provide fodder for cartoonists if he didn't, A, have a great deal of oil, if he didn't, B, make regular visits to Tehran, where um, a statue of Simon Bolivar, who I don't think the Iranians had heard about before, or not the mullahs, was recently erected in his presence, and if he wasn't trying to replace Fidel Castro, whose bills he's been paying for a very long time. All of this makes him a little bit less of a clown than, than he looks. Uh, Juan Perón and his terrible wife, Evita, uh, were a tremendous nuisance and, like Chavez, paid their voters out of their own treasury and, and bribed and corrupted their state into bankruptcy and shame. But they didn't have oil. They, did, they didn't have the uh, potential influence that this guy has along with other members of that cartel. Does that influence wane as the price of oil, at least lately, Christopher, has begun to wane? Politically, it doesn't terrifically, uh, because, uh, as I say, he's been cushioning the Castro regime from what would otherwise be the consequences of its policy. I mean, uh, you know, no one really put it this way, but um, last month, uh, early August, the, the military took over Cuba. I mean, it wasn't reported as a, it wasn't reported as a military coup, but it was. The head of the armed forces took over the state from a man who happens to be his brother. That's so absurd that in itself the dynastic element that people didn't notice the military element. But this military coup is financed and underwritten by cheap oil from Venezuela, without which the people of Cuba would have to be eating pretty much what they can grow in their window boxes. Let me ask you, Christopher, about that money and how we would use it. Could you see, or has he already done, the funding of, of terrorists uh, and providing the financial muscle for them to do what they do? No, actually, unless I'm misinformed, uh, there's no evidence that he is doing that. He's importing and buying a lot more small arms into Venezuela than he could possibly need to keep himself in power. It's possible he's passing them on, but it's a small arms type of thing. No, in a way, he is a farcical guy. He, he talks a, a, b a better game than he plays. If he was a real revolutionary, as Castro used to be when he addressed the UN, in the old days in his guerrilla fatigues and so he wouldn't have started by genuflecting to the Pope and uh, crossing himself. But, but the sinister element of it I think is the the way in which when he isn't paying a visit to Tehran uh, the Tehran mullahs are paying visits to him and that does represent uh, um, uh, let's not use the word axis but you know what I mean uh, an alliance that, that of, of demagogues and populists and uh, people who are living on oil while bankrupting their countries and, and beggaring their people that we don't really need. So bottom line, we ignore him at our peril? Uh, yes. I mean, you must be able to think of a better phrase than that. <laughs> Christopher. We, should, we well, shouldn't ignore him. We, we should not ignore him. But the peril is, should neither be over nor understated. All right. Better said. Christopher, thank you.